In this video we're going to install Mac OS X Mountain Lion on this 4.1 2008 MacBook. Let's get started. So the machine we're focusing on today is the MacBook 4.1. This guide also applies to the MacBook 2.1 and 3.1 the only thing you really need to have is a Core 2 Duo processor and at least 2GB of RAM. An SSD is recommended for best performance. Other things you need is a couple pieces of software, Nextpost Facto being the most important one. I'll uh, get uh, into what you need and where you can get it as soon as we start screencasting from the desktop. And you also need a USB flash drive, 8GB or larger, to uh, create and install USB that we can use to install a patched version of Mountain Lion. One thing to note is that Mac Post Facto, or Next Post Facto actually, is quite a bit better than the predecessors like ML Post Factor and uh, Mac Post Factor for installing Mountain Lion, that this is actually a very stable way to install and update your uh, operating system. You will not need to boot into this flash drive again as soon as you install an update, run the patcher again, then install another update, run the patcher again from recovery. That's not necessary. Next post facto will allow you to install it once, update it, then once you're completely done with everything, just install the graphics driver and you're set. There's nothing else you need to do. Let's get into it. We'll uh, move to the desktop. All right, we're at the desktop now. You can find your model identifier by clicking on the Apple menu and going to About This Mac, More Info, and System Report. And your model identifier will be right here. In my case, I have a MacBook 4.1. This guide also applies to the MacBook 2.1 and 3.1. You'll need a Core 2 Duo CPU and at least 2 gigabytes of memory. In our case, we have 4 gigabytes here. So that means we're uh, ready to go. You'll also need an installer of OS X Mountain Lion. I have one here. Mine is 1084 because I'm a filthy pirate and I don't have the latest version because I never bought it. So yeah, you'll need to go to this link in order to get the software for next post facto. I have it opened up here in Waterfox Classic. Good browser for Mountain Lion. We'll need to install the unsupported 32-bit version here for OS X 10.8. You can click download here and it will download all the scripts and files you'll need. In my case I already have them downloaded so just save them. And you can just follow the guide that is right here. So you can go to that link, I'll post it in the video description. So you can follow along with the steps here. Should be pretty self-explanatory. At this point it's a good idea to plug in your USB flash drive. So I'll do that right now. I'll wait for it to show up. Now they want to go to disk utility and make sure that it is formatted. In my case it's a 32 gigabyte SanDisk Ultra here. Let's just select the device. Choose Mac OS Extended Journaled. Give it a name that's easy to type, as we'll need to do some stuff through Terminal. And we'll wait for it to format. Okay, it's mounted now. So what we'll need to do now is go to terminal and change directory to where the files are saved. We can do ls to see which directory we're in right now. In my case I have saved the files to downloads, so we'll do cd downloads. We can do an ls again to see which folder it stored the next post facto files. You can just type a small part of the folder name and just hit the tab key. It will auto complete. Now that we're in the correct folder, we can do a listing again using ls. And we can see a couple of scripts in there. According to the guide, we should now be able to do a full command to get our 
automated installer creation going. You need to type dot slash in order to execute a script. And the script in this case is called, as we can see in this folder here, oipatch.sh. Then we'll need to put in the installer file. There's a couple of ways to do that. What I'd like to do, and that works very well, is go into the applications folder. We'll put this aside for a bit. We don't have a very high resolution screen to work with at this point. Drag it on top of the window. It will put the entire path in there. And then we'll need to put in the path to our flash drive. Again, we can just drag and drop that, and it will fill it in for us. Now we'll hit enter. It's going to do some checksumming, verify that all the images and all the drives are okay. Stretch it out a little bit. If you're doing this on a newer Mac and just creating it for an older one, this might go a bit faster, especially when you have a USB 3 capable Mac. Mine is just this 4, 1 that we're going to do the installation on. So this only has USB 2 and it will take a while to uh, verify and create everything. Also, another note, if you're trying to do this on Mac OS 11 Big Sur, you'll probably find that this won't work. This script won't run properly. So you might have to use an older version of Mac OS in order to do this. Because I already have this Mac handy, I decided to just do it on this one. At this point, we just need to uh, let it do its thing. It will ask you for your password in order to uh, execute as root. We'll do that. Hit enter. It asks us to erase the contents of our USB stick. We'll type in Y and hit enter. And now it will begin the restoring process. It will start copying the Mountain Lion installer and all the patches that it needs to the USB flash drive. And uh, this is going to take a while, so uh, depending on how fast your USB drive and your USB interface are, this could take upwards of 30 minutes. If you have a pretty fast USB flash drive and USB interface, it could be done in about 5 to 10 minutes. So I'll just let it run and uh, I'll get back uh, when, it's, uh, when it's done. And now that everything is done, it's safe to close the window and reboot your Mac. So let's do that. And as soon as your display turns off, it's safe to start holding the option key. So we can get it to the boot picker. Alright, with the option key held, we should be able to get into the boot picker now. There we go. Mac OS X base system, that's the one we need. Select it and hit enter. And then we'll need to wait for it to start loading the installer. If you get the no entry sign here, you'll need to recreate your installer because something went wrong in the process. Maybe you skipped a step or your installer was corrupted. Just try again and it should be okay. Okay, here we are. Now we can pick a language. If it jumps to your default language that you had on your Mac before, just hit the back arrow here, you can get to the language selection screen. First, we'll go to Utilities and Disk Utility, so we can format the partition we're going to install to. Could have done this earlier, but might as well do it now. We'll select the disk, we'll click Erase. Be sure to click the partition if you have multiple partitions and operating systems installed. Mine is called Nextpost Facto SSD. We'll click Erase. Keep it on Mac OS Extended Journal, very important. Close out a disk utility, and we're ready to install OS X. We'll click Continue here. Agree to the end user license agreement. Select Next Post Facto SSD, and click Install. And now all you need is a little bit of patience. Depending on what kind of hard drive you have and USB flash drive, this might take somewhere up to about a half an hour to an hour. If you have a very slow original hard drive and 2 gigs of RAM and a USB 2 slow as uh, 
USB stick. So I guess we'll have to wait until it finishes, and then we'll go from there. Once the installation process finishes, your Mac will reboot, and it should boot into your new Mountain Lion install. We'll wait four hours to boot up here. Again, I've used the 1084 image. If you have the latest version from the App Store, you will have 1085 immediately. You will only need to do one round of updates. We'll choose our country. And continue. Choose your preferred keyboard layout. A wireless network if necessary. Put in your details. We'll call it user. Choose your time zone. Continue. Start using your Mac. Let's do that. You'll notice immediately that uh, the graphics are a bit glitchy and we have no translucency. That's because we cannot install the video driver until we're absolutely done with everything. You'll need to run the uh, file that's on here. It is the mllegacygfx.pkg as soon as you're done updating. When you've installed the last update, you can run this package, like so. If you run this program before you've updated, your finder will stop working and you'll need to reinstall and do everything again. And once you've actually installed all your updates and the mllegacygfx.pkg, you're basically ready to start using Mountain Lion. And if everything went according to plan, you should now have a translucent menu bar. Your icons on the dock should not be glitching out. And once you go to your more info and uh, look at your graphics here, it should say Intel GMA, either 950 if you have an older Mac, or the X3100 if you have a 2008 Mac. And if it still says something else here, like shared memory 64 megabytes, you'll probably need to run the legacy installer for the graphics once more. But uh, once you're done, everything should be all right. You should be good to go. And that concludes the tutorial on how to install macOS 10 Mountain Lion with Nextpost Facto on your MacBook 2.1, 3.1, or 4.1. I hope you enjoyed this video. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.